Hey, hey, hey team choose happiness. I am Bridget Dix. I am an executive director with Color Street and I'm excited to be here with you all today to talk about how to pivot with your business in 2021. When you hop on, I'm dying to know if you are a type A personality, you know, you like order, you like structure, or if you're type B, if you're more go with the flow, don't make me stick to a plan, don't tell me what to do kind of personality. So let me know when you hop on, whether you're watching live or the replay. Good morning, if you are type A or type B. So I'm gonna give you guys a second to pop some of that into the comments while we are waiting for everybody to hop on and we're gonna jump right in and get started, okay? Michelle's type B, Anna's type A. And I have a reason I'm asking you this and you'll see it in a few minutes. Um, I'm type A, so you see like this hair sticking out right here? It's bugging the crap out of me, so I apologize. Um, Jennifer said she's both. Hey, Monica. Hey, y'all. Okay, I see some that are both and I completely get, oh, I've never heard of type N, Amanda. My type A don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> um, I know that you can absolutely be like one type in certain situations and another one in others. So I understand that. So first, before we jump into all of that, um, I'm gonna tell you type A's, I, I'm a type A, I resonate with you. Good morning, y'all, hey, hey, hey. Thank y'all for jumping on. Oh, <laughs> she hit the wrong button. I was like, Amanda's got some information that I don't have. I'm gonna need her to tell me that once this training's over because type A's need to know the information. So, um, I'm a type A, I resonate with you, I get it. And for us type A's, the information that I'm gonna share with you, y'all, it's gonna be a little bit harder for us to embrace and to be able to roll with some of what I'm gonna talk about. But being able to do that and being able to pivot in our businesses is critical for the type of business that we're in. So, I hear you type A's before you turn me off and you're like, nope, not listening to her. She's talking about changing and pivoting and, and switching things up. Don't like it. Understand that I get you. I feel you deeply. But we're going to talk about why it's so, so, so critical in this business and how we can do it and how we can get a little bit more okay with, with doing some of those things, okay? So, y'all, it's 2021. 2020 is over and we are so glad. Am I right? Throw up some hearts and some thumbs up if you are glad 2020 is gone. So we're now in 2021 and I know things are not normal by any means, but they are starting to normalize more. So some things are starting to get back to similar to the way that they used to be. Um, and while not everything is, things are starting to change. So the same is true with our businesses. So today we're gonna to talk about how to embrace the pivot. If you're taking notes, write that one down. Embrace the pivot or just the word pivot, okay? So to be able to pivot in this business means that we are you know, going to basically get comfortable with being uncomfortable sometimes. We're gonna get comfortable with having a plan for those type A people and knowing that it might change and we might have to rework something or do something differently than the way we did it before because that's life. And as much as us type A's want to plan and want to have a structure, we know what happens when we plan. You know, you see memes about it, like you plan and God laughs kind of thing. Like things don't always go according to plan. So how are we going to work our businesses around that and still be successful? Because we're gonna plan, especially as type A's, we're gonna plan and we're gonna know exactly what we need to do when we need to do it, but then things are gonna change, just like 2020 and everything that it brought. Like things went crazy and we had to pivot, but now we've gotta pivot back. And that's the cool thing. Like if you think about pivoting, it's usually not like completely changing. It's like you're right, like imagine there's a ball and you're right here and you're gonna pivot here. Well, there may be times you pivot back or you may pivot all the way around and come back. So just know that just because you go this way right now, there may be a time where you come back this way. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. So we're gonna talk today specifically about this type of business that we're in and what we need to do to you know, crush 2021 now that things are a little bit different. Um, we're gonna talk about how to get customers back to our websites. And we're gonna talk about a little bit about how to um, maximize some of the mini collections and smaller launches that Color Street is giving us this year. Okay, and remember the whole time, we're gonna embrace the pivot. 
Okay, you with me? So first, let's talk about this type of business that we're in. Y'all, we are a party plan business. Color Street is based on parties. So with that, first I'm gonna tell you that in order to grow in this business, you have to have nail bars. You will hear us preach time and time and time and time again, hey, hey, good morning for y'all that are jumping on, that nail bars are the bread and butter of your business. Now you may be able to maintain where you're at by just running a VIP and having an occasional nail bar every now and then. You may be able to maintain, but if you really want to grow in this business, if you want to keep new faces, new customers coming in, nail bars are the fastest, easiest, most effective, and most efficient way to do that. So in 2020, here's point two of this. In 2020, um, whether you were a seasoned stylist with us already in 2020, or if you joined in 2020, we had to pivot away from nail bars because the business wasn't able to do that. We couldn't send customers to our website in order for them to purchase through a nail bar. If we had nail bars, we had to do them mostly from on hand inventory because the web was not supporting that. We didn't have the inventory um, at home office to do nail bars. So many of us um, seasoned stylists, or if you, like I said, if you were new and came in, learned how to run our businesses with on hand inventory. We learned how to not send customers to the website. We learned how to still service them and provide good customer service without them going to the web. And you guys, now is the time that we've got to start working to pivot back to that. So Color Street this year is helping us do that, whether you've realized that or not. And this actually transitions into my main point two of all of this is Color Street is helping us by helping create exclusivity. It is not Color Street's business model for us to have to have a ton of on-hand inventory, for us to have to invoice our customers and ship to our customers. Now, do some of us do that? Absolutely, and it is totally fine if that is how you run your business and you choose to. However, most of us got in the habit of doing that out of necessity from pivoting in 2020, and now here we are, finding ourselves in this new year with all of these launches coming at us left and right, all this new stuff. And we're like, we can't keep up almost. We're like, well, I just ordered and I, now I got to order this and I don't have any of this on hand. But guess what? Now we can send our customers to the website. We don't have to have all of that on hand inventory anymore. When our web is stocked, it is almost fully stocked. Everything is there for our customers. So Color Street is helping us um, create this exclusivity and this drive to the web. So they want it to be easy on us. They don't want us to have to do all of that extra work that is involved in selling from our VIP unless that is our personal preference of how we structure and run our businesses. They want customers to go to the web. They want to make it as easy on us as possible. So let's talk about a few ways to do that. Here's some tips on how to get your customers back to the web with what Color Street is giving us because they're helping give us that exclusivity and that urgency. And in a second, we're going to talk specifically about some of the mini collections and the smaller launches that they're doing throughout the year to do all of that. But just in general, some ways to get customers back to the web. Number one, you can offer a small gift with an online purchase. It could be the first three or the first five or whatever. And y'all, when I say a gift, I don't mean it has to be anything extravagant. It can be a twosie, which, you know, when you're offering it as a gift, you're going to call it, you know, a mixed mani upgrade accent nail kind of thing. You know, make it exciting and exclusive. But just a little thank you to your customers because you're going to reward the actions that you want them to do. If you want them to go to your web versus come to you for everything that they want and need and you have to order and then invoice and ship it, reward them for the actions that you want them to do. So if they're going to the web, you can promote it as a sale or a special or you can just start dropping them a thank you letter in the mail thank you so much for supporting my business here's a little extra sparkle to upgrade your mani 
they're going to start to realize we're retraining our customers, okay? We're retraining them and, and getting them to do the actions we want them to do. So they're gonna start to realize that when they order from your website, they get extra and more from you than if they make you do all that extra work. Now, for some reason, some people tend to think that it helps you more when they order from your own hand inventory. And if you're trying to move your own hand inventory so that you can get less of it in your house, that could be the case. However, in general, you can let your customers know, you know, it's all the exact same. When you order from the web, it supports me just as much as when you order directly from me and what I have here. And you can even let them know, like, I don't have that on hand, but it's on our web. Here, here's the link. Like, make it easy for them to still shop with you and get the sets that they want through the web. Don't make it quite as easy for them to shop through you. And I don't want to say don't give good customer service, but you don't have to go out of your way if you're not planning an order or a bulk order and you don't have something and somebody wants it, let them know. You know, I, I love that set. It's one of my favorites. I think you're gonna love it too. I actually don't have it on hand right now because I've sold out or I've used it myself, but it's available on my web. Here's the link. Make it super easy. Um, so number two, don't tell them at first that you will grab sets for them guide them to the web. That kind of goes back to what I was just saying. Um, now, I'm not saying don't ever grab them. If you know that some people are, like I have one particular customer, she doesn't even like for me to mail her sets. We meet somewhere in person when I happen to be going that way. She likes to get them from me. Like I know she is probably never going to order from the web. So if you have some people, don't just stop serving them, but guide them to the web first. Don't let them know, oh, I'm going to grab them. You know, I always have them on hand. We're getting away from that kind of mentality for our customers and more towards you can get it over here. Um, check my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, if you, oh, here's the other thing. If you're having nail bars, those nail bars we talked about in the beginning, if you're having nail bars and transitioning those customers from the nail bars to your VIP group, they're already used to shopping the web. That's how they're already trained to shop with you is through the web. So if you keep that going in your VIP group by directing them to the web, nothing's gonna change in their mind. It's not like, oh, she you know, provided excellent customer service and had all these sets on hand for me before, but now she doesn't. That's what they're already used to. So you don't have to change that mentality with them. Um, here's something else you can do. When new events and um, launches are coming or when new things are coming, you can create an event in your VIP group to promote the new launch or the promo or the sale or the special for buying from my web or whatever you're doing. When you create an event in your group, more people see it because it allows, it tells people, you know, such and such created an event. Um, and it also allows you to invite them to ensure that they see it. So use events to your advantage. You might not want to do one every single week, but at least a couple times a month when new things are coming, when you think customers um, don't want to miss out on something, do the event, let them know. The other thing you can do, um, and I see Anna is on here, Senior Director, Director Anna Hutchinson gave me this amazing tip. Um, you can offer to make a post when something new launches and tag them in the post. So you can say, I'll let you guys know as soon as these are live on the web. So you're still providing good customer service. You're still letting them know as soon as they're available, but you're guiding them back to the web. And here's a pro tip for that, okay? You can pre-schedule, use Facebook scheduler, do your post, tag your people in it and hit schedule. You can schedule it out. So let's say if we have, like if we knew a launch was happening later today, you could schedule it out for tomorrow or for next week. And then as people say, oh yeah, tag me in it, tag me in it. You go in and edit your, your scheduled post. You add them to it so it still tags them. And then when it goes live, you go into your scheduled post and you hit publish now. So all the work is already done and then you just hit publish now when everything's live. So they're still getting that good customer service. They're still some of the first to know and that's saving you if you're gonna do your own order, you can be on the web ordering and not having to worry about tagging all of your VIPs that wanna know when it's live or sending messages to them because you've already done all the pre-work and all you have to do is hit schedule now and then you're over there doing your own order. I see a couple questions coming in. Um, I will get to questions at the end but I wanna make sure 
Um, Mindy, we're going to talk exactly about that in just a second. Um, all right. So before we move on to point number three, I would love to hear if you guys have any other suggestions, ideas, or things that have worked well for you getting customers to your web. And then we'll move on to that, which is going to answer Mindy's question. And again, if you're watching the replay, still drop any suggestions, ideas, things that you have that have worked well. So number three, let's talk about these mini collections and small launches that Color Street is giving us throughout the year. So Mindy, this is going to help answer her question was, what if somebody just wants a set um, from a mini collection? I think she, with, um, where'd she go? just wants one set from the launch. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So again, this is not Color Street's business model for us to have to have a ton of inventory on hand. So this year, they have given us an amazing tool, 18 to be exact, um, actually more, because we have 18 mini launches, plus other small non-catalog launches throughout the year. They, Color Street is working very hard and very diligently on keeping new stuff in front of our customers. How many of you, because I've, I've fallen, fallen victim to this, have had customers be like, oh, I'm stocked up right now. I've got all that I need. And you're like, dang, I was hoping she would, you know, be a repeat customer and come back. But if they're sitting over there with five, six, ten sets, they don't need what we've already got on the web. So Color Street has given us multiple opportunities every single month to get something new in front of our customers and to keep those repeat customers coming back, always coming back for more. Because even if they have 10 sets over here, they don't have any of this new one. And they are um, giving us limited edition sets. And y'all, when things sell out, that's actually good for our business. I know sometimes we're like, dang, I love that when it was beautiful. I want it more for myself. I think my VIPs want it more. But y'all, sellouts and out of stocks are good for business. I promise you, because they help create that exclusivity and that urgency. So what happens is it teaches our customers and it helps give us the tools that we need to teach our teach and train our customers and that's what our job is. It's to train our customers on how we want them to act now, where we're at in business right now. So it shows them that, because right now they've gotten into this mindset. Once everything started coming back in stock, they're like, oh, I can get that whenever. Their website's fully stocked. And we highlighted that for a while. We're like, everything's in stock. And now they're like, oh, everything's in stock. I can get it whenever. I'm not in a rush. Payday's not till next week. We're good. I'll just wait. And what happens when they wait? Y'all, they forget. So number one, we want them to have a sense of urgency. And the only way to do that is to make things limited. So with these limited collections, yeah, most of them are only two sets, but it's doing that for us. And when, you know, Deep Space, I think that was the name of the collection, sold out in like four or five days, they were here for almost a week. So that gave people, like you didn't have to be on the minute they launched, like, um, like restocks were back over the summer. They didn't have to be on right that minute, but, it shows them if you don't get them when they're there, you might miss out on them forever. So here's how you're gonna train your customers with the mini launches, okay? Number one, let them know these will sell out. They will not restock once they are out and they are limited. We don't know exactly how many they have. We don't know how many are gonna be bought up you know, immediately. If you like them, get them now. That's what you tell your customers. Get them now. Don't sleep on it. Don't wait. Number two, hype them up. Create excitement about these sets. Go back to point number two where we talked about creating the events, um, you know, creating the posts to get them excited. Like, yes, I want to, like, people always want to be the first. Yeah, I want to know when they launch. I want to be the first to grab mine. Hype them up. Number three, you can offer a bulk order or to grab sets if you have customers that just want one or two. I would caution you if you are working to train your people to buy from the web, not to put that out there from the very beginning. So I know a lot of people do pre-orders for launches and get a lot of success that way. And if you want to keep doing that, that's okay. 
But if you want to retrain your customers that if you want these sets, you need to go to the web, then don't offer a pre-order up front. Maybe offer it after the sets launch, maybe the end of that first day. Or grab a few because you know some people are going to miss it or they're just going to forget or be lazy and not do it on their own, but don't tell them you're grabbing them ahead of time. Um, and the good thing with offering a bulk order is if you do it that way, you know, you especially if people are only getting one or two sets, you still get that fourth set for free. So that helps build your inventory or your giveaways or whatever you want those extra sets for. And I'm not like, Stacey, if, if bulk orders work for you and you get a ton of business, because I know some people get a ton from bulk orders and customers like the ease of that, then I'm not saying like stop doing them all together or stop doing them completely, especially with the bigger launches if we think the website's going to bog down or things like that. But these are just some ideas on how to get people back to the web and take some of the work off of you and for you to not have to always have inventory on hand. Oh, I never do pre-orders at a discount. Um, if it's brand new, they are paying full price. That's just my personal, personal thing. Um, so number four for point three is upsell. Upsell, upsell, upsell. So with many collections, there are two sets. So if some people may only want one of the two or just the two and they, they've got their 10 others, you know, they're good. Um, upsell, let them know you can always... Um, Encourage coordinating party packs and mixed manis, especially if they're still in stock and people have started to get um, get their sets in and have created mixed mani nail fees. However, some of these may sell out before we ever get them in our hands to show really good nail fees. So you could encourage coordinating party packs for similar colors, anything like that, but also let them know, okay, you love this set. It is limited. So once it's gone, it's gonna be gone forever. If you only want this one or you only want these two, you might want to get multiples. Go ahead and take advantage of that buy three, get one free and stock up so you'll have this set all year long because once it's gone, we can't get it anymore. So you can always upsell even if we only have, you know, a, a mini collection of two new sets. Um, so don't, don't feel afraid to offer that piece of advice to your customers and they're going to think of that as good customer service because if it's, if it's something that they love, like take one in four, y'all. That's what I've got on right now. It's beautiful. And everybody now is like, man, I wish I had gotten more. It's so pretty. I wish I could, you know, wear it all year long. Tell them, get extras now, prepare for that because they're going out and you're going to want them later. So if you guys have any other suggestions, any other tips on pivoting on, you know, using nail bars to drive your businesses, getting customers back to the web on maximizing some of these launches and collections. I would love to hear them. Um, today, we talked about three different ways to embrace the pivot and rock your business in 2021, even if embracing that pivot and change is hard. Um, we talked about getting back to parties. We talked about getting customers back to the web and the things that we can do and suggest to maximize these mini collections and launches. So I hope that is helpful. I hope that you can take these ideas and run with them and implement them. I would love to hear if you try some of the things. And here's the other thing, you guys. Anytime you hear a training or new information, if somebody gives you a laundry list of ideas, you don't have to implement everything at one time. You can pick one thing, the thing that you like the most or that's most interesting or you think will be most impactful. Pick that thing and try that. See how it works. See if you want to, you know, keep on doing that or this one didn't work for me, so now let me move to this. So as you try these things, whether it be in the near future or even months down the road, if they are helpful, I would love to hear how it's going for you. Um, and then again, like any tips or or ideas that you try and that work well, would love for you guys to share because sharing is caring. And remember, in 2021, we are all going to embrace the pivot and rock our businesses. Are right, y'all have a fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye.